Have you ever wondered what happens to your body when you stop eating carbohydrates or you stop eating food at all? Hello, my name is Dr. Kamya Tiku and today in this video, we are going to discuss a state of starvation, which is called gluconeogenesis. And let's see what happens when our body is in starvation. So when you have stopped eating carbohydrates from outside, we have few stores of glucose which are already present in the body in liver and skeletal muscle because they are majorly present in liver. That's why I mentioned liver here. Glycogen starts breaking down into glucose by a process called glycogenolysis to support the body for fulfilling its ATP needs. But there are some tissues in the body like nervous tissue, RBCs and all, which can only utilize glucose as a source of energy. And that's why gluconeogenesis comes into action. You have to note here that gluconeogenesis takes place inside the body parallel to glycogen breakdown. Gluconeogenesis means, gluco means glucose, neo means new, and genesis means synthesis. So in whole, gluconeogenesis means glucose anabolism. That is production of glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors. Why do we need non-carbohydrate precursors? Because we are not having food. We are not having carbohydrate rich food from outside that is in our diet. Ideally, gluconeogenesis is called reversal of glycolysis. Uh, in this video, we will learn whether it's exactly the reversal of glyco glycolysis or not. Fat pyruvate amino acids, these are the sources of non-carbohydrate precursors which help in conversion to glucose. The sites of gluconeogenesis include 50 to 60 percent in liver, 40% in kidneys and some minor amount is present in intestines also. Propionate enters Krebs cycle and lactate also in, uh, converts to pyruvate directly and then this pyruvate converts to glucose in starvation state and this is called gluconeogenesis. Whereas in case of glycolysis, which is in the well-fed state, exact opposite uh, blood glucose, 6-carbon molecule coming from diet enters the cell and by a 10 steps of glycolysis, it converts into two molecules of pyruvate. There are three irreversible steps in the glycolysis pathway. And these are the steps which are different in gluconeogenesis. Now, let's begin with gluconeogenesis. As I've already mentioned, gluconeogenesis takes place inside our body during starvation state. That means when you are not having carbohydrates from outside sources. So it refers to a group of metabolic reactions in cytosol and mitochondria to maintain the blood glucose level constant throughout the fasting state. We do not want our body to have any kind of harm during fasting. There are reactions in the gluconeogenesis pathway which are regulated by insulin, glucagon and many such hormones. And some of them are highly exergonic and irreversible also. The first step is from any non-carbohydrate precursor. Here we have taken example of muscle uh, lactic acid. It converts to pyruvate. The three carbon pyruvate then enters the mitochondria because the enzymes which are meant for conversion of pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate, which is the last step of glycolysis. The, we don't have enzyme to convert pyruvate directly to phosphoenol pyruvate. And that's why pyruvate has to enter mitochondria from cytosol so that pyruvate can convert to oxaloacetate. There is an enzyme called pyruvate carboxylase, which converts pyruvate, a three carbon molecule to oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon molecule. So in order to convert a three carbon to four carbon, we have to add a carbon dioxide molecule uh, here. Next, oxaloacetate converts to malate because unfortunately, cell doesn't have any transporters to transport oxaloacetate uh, outside the membrane. Thus, oxaloacetate converts to malate and malate again comes back from the membrane and converts, it regains oxaloacetate again. So the whole purpose is to get oxaloacetate out of the membrane since we do not have any transporters which can do so directly. So we convert it into malate, then malate uh, goes inside the, goes then malate goes outside the membrane and converts to oxaloacetate again. This is catalyzed by reaction time for malate dehydrogenase. Next, the 4-carbon uh, oxaloacetate converts to 3-carbon phosphoenol pyruvate. The steps are similar as in case of, the rest of the steps remain similar as in case of glycolysis. Oxaloacetate, a 4-carbon molecule, has to 
convert into a three carbon phosphonyl pyruvate. So one carbon dioxide molecule will go away. The enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is called PEP carboxykinase. Now till here, pyruvate to oxaloacetate uh, and oxaloacetate to phosphonyl pyruvate, two enzymes are already been utilized, which are different from glycolysis pathway. This phosphonyl pyruvate then converts to two phosphoglycerate with the help of the enzyme enolase. Two phosphoglycerate converts to three phosphoglycerate with the help of the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase, and three phosphoglycerate converts to one three bis phosphoglycerate via phosphoglycerate kinase, and one three bis phosphoglycerate then converts to glyceraldehyde three phosphate with the help of the enzyme glyceraldehyde three phosphate dehydrogenase. And now here, glyceraldehyde three phosphate combines with dihydroxyacetone phosphate and forms a six carbon molecule called fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. This six carbon fructose 1,6 bisphosphate now has to convert to fructose 6 phosphate. So the reverse step, which was catalyzing fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1,6 bisphosphate was catalyzed by an enzyme called phosphofructokinase. And this, since this reaction is irreversible reaction, so a different enzyme will come into action, which will remove the phosphate group. The enzyme is called for fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase. And again, this enzyme is also different in gluconeogenesis. Now, fructose 6 phosphate converts to glucose 6 phosphate with the help of the enzyme phosphohexose isomerase, and glucose 6 phosphate converts to glucose uh, with the help of the enzyme glucose 6 phosphatase. Again, a different enzyme. So, there are four different enzymes in the gluconeogenesis pathway, then glycolysis, which are glucose 6 phosphatase, fructose 1,6 bisphosphatase. Phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase and pyruvate carboxylase. So you have seen here the gluconeogenesis pathway requires two organelles, mitochondria as well as cytosol. Gluconeogenesis reaction requires two organelles, mitochondria as well as cytosol. Whereas glycolysis takes place only in cytosol. Now, now gluconeogenesis, as I have already mentioned, is comes under the starvation state. And as required by a lot of cells of the body, a lot of uh, tissues of the body, like brain erythrocytes, renal medulla, lens and cornea, testis and skeletal muscle during exercise. Brain uses glucose exclusively in both the fed and fasting states, except for prolonged fasting, which uses ketones. So brain will use glucose only as its uh, preferred fuel. It's not like other tissues who can rely on fatty acids also. But then when there is no store of glucose left or glucose cannot be synthesized endogenously also, then during that time, which is called prolonged fasting, fatty acids get converted into ketone bodies and then they are utilized by brain. Initially, during the first few hours of fasting, like glucogenolysis is the primary source of glucose. But after several hours of starvation, gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis contribute equally to blood glucose levels. So when glycogen stores deplete, the body uses lactate, glycerol, glucogenic amino acids and odd chain fatty acids as glucose source. Because glycogen being a hydrated molecule, uh, it only is, is present inside the body in very few amount, like only let's say around 190 grams of glycogen is present, which can be stored inside the body. But the daily requirements for glucose inside our body are around 150 grams. So obviously they are not able to Glycogen is not able to fulfill the energy demands or glucose demands on its own completely. So estimates say that 54% of glucose comes from gluconeogenesis after 14 hours of starvation. And this contribution rises to 64% after 22 hours and up to 84% after 40 year, 42 hours. So that's why uh, at the end of the video, we can say that although... There are a lot of steps in the gluconeogenesis pathway which are same as glycolysis, but it is not the exact reversal. And the aim of both the pathways is different. That's all about the video. I hope you liked my video. Um, do let me know in the comment section. And do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.